Bowery, are there any agenda revisions? No, Mayor, please or not. <coughs> Councilmember Christensen? Um, I would like to make an amendment to the resolution that we passed um, two weeks ago at the last regular session. Which resolution is that? Uh, this is resolution. R2017, um, supporting the extension of deferred action for childhood arrivals. Okay, cool. what do you want to change? Uh, I want to change the last line, section two, that reads currently that the city of Longmont calls on the Colorado delegation, Congress, and the president to demonstrate your commitment to the American economy and the ideals of our nation by continuing DACA until Congress modernizes our immigration system and provides a more permanent form of relief for these individuals. I would like to cross out continuing DACA by uh, passing the bipartisan 2017 DREAM Act unamended. Because uh, that was a program, DACA was a pro presidential program, it was ended. It was started by the president, it was ended by the president. Congress can't continue. And the DREAM Act is the closest thing we have. It's been on the books for six, it's been put before Congress for 16 years and it's time that they did something. Do I have a second? Did you put that in a motion? Yeah. I would like to amend uh, resolution R2017, uh, section 2, to read that the city of Longmont calls on the Colorado delegation, Congress, and the president to demonstrate your commitment to the American economy and the ideals of our nation by passing the bipartisan 2017 DREAM Act unamended until Congress modernizes our immigration system and provides more permanent form of relief for these individuals. Okay, you know, the, if we instruct staff to do this, it has to come back as an incomplete thing and then we have to vote on it again. Councilor, okay. Councilmember Santos. Thank you, Mayor, because I was going to make that same suggestion that if we're going to do this, it needs to come back as a resolution to potentially repeal the, the previous resolution to adopt the new resolution with the new language. That's the more appropriate way to do it. Okay. Um, I don't think this needs to be a second. Well, you're, you're making a motion to bring it back. Is that correct? Yes. Then I will second that, because I do think it's time to push Congress to do something with this. It's been on the books for 16 years. Let's, let's make it a, a law. Thank you. Attorney, did you want to make a comment? <laughs> I, uh, you do raise the attorney, I do want to make a procedural comment. I believe since this motion, the resolution has passed, we need to vote to reconsider the motion. Okay. If, it, if it's the exact same motion, that uh, resolution, that it's going to be added. And that is appropriate, given that this is the first meeting after the passing of that resolution for which the final action could be taken. Okay. Was that acceptable to the motion and the second? I thought it was the second meeting, this the first regular meeting after. Okay. <coughs> Council Mayor Bagley? Thank you, Mayor Jones. I, I don't have a problem with that, the support of doing that. Um, as I pointed out, you know, on August 1st, 2001, Dick Durbin and Orrin Hatch bipartisan support. So if you want to bring it back, that's fine. But um, there was no 2007. At least this is the problem with voting on national issues, is that I don't think the motion was for 2017. There was no national agreement it's from 2001. And so we can we can, we can can amend it to say 2001 is originally drafted to not amend it, but there wasn't anything in 2017. 
And anyway, I guess my point is that I'll vote for it out of, uh, I, I guess, yeah, yeah, national politics, I guess, just, I'm not really up to date on right now. Councilmember Santos. Thank you, Mayor Coombs. Well, and again, this is why we have yeah, bringing national politics items to council can be very tricky. But if we're going to bring this back, I would like to have all the material with the correct dates. You know, whether it's 2001, whether it's 2017, whether it's 2004, what have you. Instead of just the resolution, I want the background. I want when DACA was first instituted, by whom, where the legislation has gone. I, I want, you know, if we're going to do this, and, and then we're going to do this again after it passed 7 0. But if we're going to do this correctly, I want all the backup information. So that way, the council has it, so we can make the, the you know, whether we will vote for it or yet, yeah, yeah or nay, but also the, the public has it as well. Councilor mm Christensen? -hmm. Okay, I can help do that. And um, um, the reason that I bring up national politics is because national and state politics are affecting people who live here. So that's why it's relevant. Okay. We've got a motion that's been seconded. Let's vote. Okay, passes 6 0. Councilor Rosanto is descending. Okay. Um, Is there a report from the city manager? No comments, Mayor Council. Okay. So now we've got two special reports. Uh, proclamation designating October 17th as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And uh, Aaron Elder is here to accept this proclamation. I'll go ahead and read the proclamation. Proclamation designating October 7, 2017 as Pregnancy and Infant, Infant Loss Awareness Month in Longmont, Colorado. Whereas on October 25, 1988, President Ronald Reagan designated October as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month by signing a proclamation 5890, and whereas approximately one in every four women suffer miscarriage stillbirth or infant loss, and whereas Longmont community organizations and advocates throughout the city work diligently to support women and families who have faced the significant loss through miscarriage, stillbirth, or infant loss, and whereas recognizing October as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month will provide bereaved mothers, fathers, and family members with the acknowledgement um, and compassion for the great tragedy that has impacted their lives, whereas bringing public awareness to this grief will help those who feel marginalized in their loss to see a compassionate society that can recognize their suffering and grief. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Elton, as mayor, by, uh, by the virtue of authority vested in me in the city council of the city of Walmart, do you hereby proclaim October 2017 as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month in Longmont. I invite all citizens in the community to be aware of my Baby Angel Foundation, which is helping transform our society's response to pregnancy and infant loss. Feel free to make any statements. Or? Okay, great, thank you. I prepared something, and it may be right around five minutes instead of three, so bear with me. And, and thank you so much for um, for claiming pregnancy and infant loss awareness month here in Longmont. It means a lot to not only me but a lot of moms in the community who I've spoken with. If you could take a moment and if you feel comfortable, please raise your hand if you know someone who has suffered a pregnancy or infant loss. So 
when you look around the room, that's quite powerful. One in four women have suffered a miscarriage, stillbirth, or infant loss. However, until more recent history, these losses have been mostly masked in silence. This evening, I'm gonna provide a brief narrative about my experience and Longmont's incredible response um, and the opportunity for our community to continue the dialogue around pregnancy and infant loss. On August 19th, here in Longmont, in 2014, I received a phone call no parent wants and certainly dreads. My child, Evelyn Claire Elder, had stopped breathing at daycare. She was three months and 22 days old, and her death was deemed sudden, unexplained infant death. You know, although she physically died that day, though, she started a transformation within me long before that continues, and for that, I am grateful. SIDS, or S-U-I-D-S, has no known cause, and it is the leading cause of infants from ages one month to one year. Unfortunately, funding for SIDS research is incredibly low and very low resource. So I encourage members of our community to continue to support finding, cause, finding answers to these causes um, that are unknown, whether it's SIDS or other pregnancy losses. Losing a child through pregnancy and or infant loss creates a void around all the future hopes and dreams for that child and leaves, frankly, a deep wound for families. And although deep, that wound can be healed through empathy and compassion. A compassionate response to pregnancy and infant loss for members within the community creates a space for healing and healthy grief. I want to take the time today to acknowledge all of the community members within Longmont who walked this journey with me and supported me through my grieving experience. Without their support, I wouldn't be here, and I know that. So Longmont United's Embrace Support Group at Longmont United Hospital, led by Sue Matthews and Laura Vickers within the community. My Baby Angel Foundation, led by Marika Barris. Victims advocates with the Longmont Police Department, in particular Tyler Brooks, who is one of the most compassionate people I've ever met. Police chaplains with the Longmont Police Department, Rick Evers, who's taught me how to walk this journey with grace. First responders, police, fire, EMTs, and in particular, police officer Ryan Douglas here in Longmont, who even had the empathy and compassion to call us a year later after Evelyn's death. And that small act meant so much to us. These are all examples of community members here in Longmont who have supported me through my grief, and I'm very grateful for the multiple services that Longmont provides and the awareness that they draw to this issue to create a dialogue around an issue that, you know, throughout time has been pretty much silent. Now, while Longmont is special in its response, and I truly do believe this, I love living in Longmont, I'm very lucky to live here, but while Longmont is special in its response to pregnancy and infant loss, this provides our community members within the city to be inspirers of other communities and other community members' responses to pregnancy and infant loss. Throughout history, pregnancy and infant loss have been masked in silence and met, met with judgment, blame, and shame. It is time to fully address this history and move forward through positive change and continued growth and the rest of our community for a dialogue and space to talk about these losses and grief experiences. <coughs> Each individual sitting here today and throughout our city has the opportunity to transform society through their individual responses and conversations about pregnancy and infant loss with their friends, family members, co-workers, other members in the community, whether in response to a loss a week ago or many years ago. I've had women from actually all over the nation reach out to me um, who may have lost a child 30 plus years ago and are very empowered by the conversation and the dialogue. As an example of a compassionate response, if you're curious about ways to kind of approach mothers in these situations, I want to highlight two of my really good friends who actually live in different states. Um, they, actually, they mailed me a card at least once a month for at least a full year in response to Evelyn. This response was powerful and meaningful, and on, now that I'm on the other side of it, I see how important these types of gestures truly are. Uh, before that, I would have not probably done that. And so this is just an example of how people can respond when they have friends and community members in these situations. Neighbors have, in this community have brought me coffee, they sat and talked with me, and they've all provided a lot of hope. Overall, one small gesture of empathy creates a wave of hope and healing. By leaning into the conversation about pregnancy and infant loss, 
our community creates the capacity for healing, healing, resilience, and transformation. As I end this evening, I want to call everyone's attention to October 15th. October 15th is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day. The day is observed with remembrance ceremonies and candle lighting vigils. So please join that international wave of light as it is an international wave of light. People all over the world at 7 p.m. in their time zone have the opportunity to light a candle to honor our, our children. Finally, if you or someone you know could use more support, the Embrace Support Group at Longmont United Hospital meets the last Tuesday of every month from 6 to 7.30. So thank you today for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and for letting me share my story. Really through dialogue and narrative and conversation is when healing happens. Thank you. designating October 16th, 2017th as Fertile Cat Day in Longmont, Colorado. And then uh, a couple of people, Tony and uh, Esther uh, Mills, uh, Longmont friends of Fertile and Abandoned Cats are here to accept the proclamation, so I'll go ahead and read the proclamation first. A proclamation designating October 2017th as, oops, you know what? Excuse me, I handed the wrong proclamation to you. A proclamation designating October 16th, 2017th as Feral Cat Day in Walmart, Colorado, where it's Feral Cat Day helps Longmont residents acknowledge the presence of feral cats, feral and abandoned cats in the community, and to advocate to improve the lives of all cats and the people who care for them. And whereas Longmont Friends of Feral and Abandoned Cats, LFFAC, advocates for feral and abandoned cats by taking advantage of opportunities to educate residents about the advantages of caring for our feral community cats to create a more compassionate long run. And whereas LFFAC values all people and animals and encourages residents to treat these cats with dignity and respect, advocate for people who have compassion for cats and who are willing to take action to help make cats' lives better and value communities that make a commitment towards allowing community cats to live safely and freely in their natural environment. And whereas Longmont is a caring and compassionate community, it cares for all its community members, including its feral and abandoned cats. And therefore, I, Dennis Elkin, as mayor by the virtue of authority vested in me in the city council of the city of Longmont, do hereby proclaim October 16th, 2017th as Feral Cat Day in Longmont and encourage all our citizens to have compassion for community cats. Thank you. I just want to thank you. My name is Esther Mills. Tony could not be here tonight because she's out rescuing some kittens um, that were ill and needed to be transported from the vet to the foster home. I want to thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to bring attention to what we do as a five-year-old nonprofit organization here in Walmart and along the Front Range and that is working with people who find themselves in situations where they're caring for cats, they start multiplying, we're able to go in there, trap, spay, neuter, vaccinate. We care for six colonies in the Longmont area. Every single day we have colony managers, colony feeders, 
they're all spayed, neutered, cared for. Um, we just feel that Longmont is the place that we want people to know that whether your feelings are uh, about cats, uh, whether they're indifferent or you like them, you don't like them, it's just about the hum humaneness of that. We want Longmont to be known as being a humane city for all its residents. So we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.
Specifically, I'm very concerned about health, and I'm very concerned about representing children in this, uh, voiceless children that don't have a, you know, a say in this. And I think we need to look no further than Erie with all the kids' problems that are there. Very strange symptoms that can't be accounted for. Um, explosions is near, you know, in a backyard. And um, there are just many concerns. And, and if none of those hit home, property values should. But what I'm asking for, I'll keep this short, is a countywide coalition as soon as we can. It's, it's an emergency. As soon as we can. This, everything's imminent, you know. Those of us that have worked on it, you know, have our hearts and souls in this. And that's what I'm asking for tonight. Thank you. Josh James. firm and have a family with two children just to give you a little background. I'm here representing East Boulder County United and the Boulder County Protectors. I'd like everyone here to stand up and believe in the right to local democracy in order to protect our community, families, and planet from corporate industrial harm. That's good. I hope that everyone in this room will stand up. Uh, in our organization's perspective, the primary purpose of the government is to serve our community for health, safety, and welfare. Right now, our community rights campaign is focused on ensuring the democratic ability to protect ourselves from the well-documented harm that is created by the fossil fuel industry, particularly hydraulic fracturing for hydrocarbons. In our view, just because a powerful industry has money to create and codify laws and regulations doesn't make those laws just. In fact, it is our duty to reject unjust laws that trample our sovereign right to health and safety. As an organization, we have studied the U.S. Constitution. We understand how the Supremacy Clause functions. We understand state preemption, Dillon's rule, corporate personhood. We aren't going to let those be excuses anymore for the destruction of our communities and ultimately life on this earth. The science is in. In order for our species and countless others to survive into the near future, we need to keep this stuff in the ground. We are here to announce our presence to you. We are following the lead of East Boulder County United and the Boulder County Protectors here in Longmont. We are done asking for regulations and compromises. compromises. That is a necessary step to exhaust the perceived remedies, and we say thank you to the organizations that have devoted their time and, and heart thus far in this effort. If we have to, we will defend our land and our children with our bodies, but ultimately we want to ban, or we want to defend a ban on oil and gas extraction in a court of law on a rights basis, and are working to develop a community bill of rights and a potential relationship with a law firm, the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund. If anyone here is interested in organizing with our busy organization, you can plug in by finding us on eastbocounited.com or come to our local chapters meetings here in Longmont at the library second and fourth Thursdays of the month at 7.30. Thank you. Jen Sutton. Good evening, council members and Mayor Coons. My name is Jen Sutton, 400 Emory Street. I'm standing here tonight with other members of the Boulder County and Longmont protectors and as a resident of Longmont who cares deeply about our right to a fair and just democratic process that allows us to protect health, safety, and welfare of our citizens and environment. I would like to read to you the narrative of the Boulder County and Longmont protectors so you can understand our group and how the message is different from other anti-fracking groups. Number one, we have spoken clearly on the issue of oil and gas development, and it is resolved that we do not want drilling in Boulder County under any circumstances. It is a violation of the land, the health of our families, and the well-being of our communities and climate. Number two, any attempt to forcefully move fracking into Boulder County is a violation of our fundamental rights. 
Number three, the laws that seek to remove us from protecting the land, the local government, the climate, and our right to self-govern are in every way immoral and illegitimate. Number four, we have the right and obligation to protect the environment, our families, and our communities. Number five, all government officials and staff are being asked to side with the people in every capacity, refuse to administer the destruction of the land and its climate, and enforce the will of the community to protect ourselves from any intrusive industry that fails to recognize these fundamental rights. Number six, in the event that elected leadership fails to join with the people and the environment, we will protect Boulder County ourselves. <coughs> this narrative resonates with my own inner truth and the values and, and values and represents the truth and values of the Boulder County protectors that we believe when we express when, when Longmont Citizen voted to ban fracking. And so I stand and I will continue to stand for what is right the right to local community self-government, the right to protect our health, safety, and welfare, and the right to clean air, water, land, and a healthy environment. There are major reasons that the counties of France, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, the Netherlands, and Bulgaria have banned fracking outright. Whole countries don't ban things without good reasons. I am asking for your pledge to ban fracking outright in Longmont. I'm asking you to deny all fracking permits in Longmont. I'm asking you to risk, or let's face it, accept getting sued again. I'm asking you to stand with your constituents as we develop a community-based Bill of Rights and Protections for Longmont. I'm asking you to be the leaders of this great city and lead in the direction that we, the people of Longmont, Colorado, have chosen. <coughs> Many on this council are up for re-election next month. This is going to be a huge issue for the new council. And I hope you're ready for that, because we are. Lori uh, Stephenson. Good evening, Mayor Coombs and Council Members. I'm Lori Stevenson, 1601 Great Western Drive in Longmont, with the Longmont Protectors and Boulder County Protectors. There are people in this room who would like our votes in the upcoming election. Most have been heard to say that they are against fracking around Longmont. The question is, what will they do to stop it? We're asking you to make a concrete difference for the good of your constituents by declining to sign the drilling permits. Instead, help us to advance a bold counter plan. Thank you in advance for being part of the solution. Uh, it's Dylan, by the way. Excuse me. Hey, I'm asking that we ban fracking in Longmont. Could you say your address, please? 4007 Hawthorne Circle. Thank you. Yeah. Right, so I want us to ban fracking in Longmont, not regulate it. You could not regulate the poisoning of our children and land. Ban it with a community rights approach. By putting into place the Longmont Bill of Rights, we, the Longmont Protectors, are putting the finishing touches on. Over 200 communities across America in seven states have already put into place community bills of rights that guarantee residents a right to health and safety from industrial harm. We must continue this trend, not only for our own protection, but to empower the self-preservation of all affected communities. <coughs> there is a fault line, as many here know, called the Longmont Wrench, uh, that runs northeast to southwest near Union Reservoir. The correlation between fracking and earthquakes is well documented at this point. This natural gas that are fracking for isn't even necessarily for us. It's for the corporation's profits. Much of what they unearth will be sold to foreign markets for a higher price, rather than to help us keep the lights on. Is it worth it to sacrifice Union Reservoir for corporate profits? Fertility is two times as high here than Boulder County. This is a trend we see repeated across multiple city, city boundaries, where the place that gets fracked, kids are twice as likely to die at birth. To residents of Longmont, please be wary of the difference between a full ban and regulation. There are those who are trying to take the wind out of our sails by convincing people we must work within the system that mandates 
the poisoning of our land and people. Shove this rhetoric to the side and stand with the Longmont protectors and East Boulder County United, who know we must challenge this evil system by demanding community rights, and we must be unwavering in this stance. Again, how many parts per million of benzene is an acceptable limit for our kids to be breathing constantly? The answer is zero. Thank you. Elise Champ, it's 828 Tenacity Drive, <clears throat> Longmont, Colorado. Hi. We humans have the solemn distinction of being the only species in imminent jeopardy of extinct to Longmont, into Longmont, under Longmont, around Longmont, is on that path. I came up here in 2012, politely and enthusiastically asking that you protect Longmont from oil and gas development. The citizens of Longmont then victoriously voted in a landslide to keep oil and gas away, away from our schools, away from our residences, away from the city limits. We said, no, no. Now, oil and gas is on the brink of being pushed upon us. This is tantamount to the rape of our Longmont. Here's what you can do. Create a coalition with other Boulder counties to lock arm in arm with them and resist. You do have a choice, City Council. Protect us, please. What, Chip? Good evening, City Council and Mayor Coombs. When I think of growing up, I hope to grow up in a healthy environment, a place where the air is clean and the water is pure. But growing up with a fracking well near my home will not allow that. Council members, citizens of Boulder County, I am talking to you. There's a saying that children are the future, but that won't be the case if our minds are weakened by pollution. My new school is going to be built near a proposed fracking well, and I do not want to grow up in a place where fracking <coughs> takes um, up all the space in our minds. Minds that should be focused on school and homework, not the gradual pollution of long, er, <coughs> uh, the United States. Thank you. <laughs> no clapping. Uh, Lindsay, go <laughs> Lindsay Gone, 1534 Taylor Mountain Drive. It's been approximately three years since I've spoken to City Council. In that time, many disappointing things have occurred, most notably the Colorado Supreme Court's unfortunate decision that Longmont's ban was unconstitutional. I am here tonight as news of a significant number of applications for fracking permits within the city limits of Longmont has come to light. I have with me only the first 40 pages of the 209-page document entitled The Compendium of Scientific, Medical, and Media Findings Demonstrating Risks and Harms of Fracking. Fourth edition, released less than a year ago. Have any of you read this? I've read it. If you haven't, you need to. I will email you the link. To summarize, as of the date of publication, a review of 685 peer-reviewed papers found that 69% of research found contamination to water from fracking, 87% found elevated air pollutant emissions from fracking, and 84% found signs of harm or potential harm to human health. In addition to these alarming statistics, the document lists the following peer-reviewed research findings. Inherent engineering problems that worsen over time. 
radioactive releases, public health effects measured directly, noise pollution, light pollution, stress, earthquakes and seismic activity, blood risks, threats to the, to the climate system, inaccurate job claims, increased crime rates, threats to property value and mortgages, and local government burdens, inflated estimates of oil and gas reserves and profitability. If I read them all, I will go over time. France has banned traffic. Bulgaria, Scotland. For those of you on council who are not globalists, but nationalists, Vermont, New York, Florida. Guys, come on, Florida. <laughs> they have 32 counties in 48 <coughs> cities with banned fracking. And when they had a bill that would have preempted local bans and opened the state for fracking, it was actually voted down in legislative committee. Sadly, Longmont made this paper for the opposite. Are we going to be behind Florida on this? The state that had to tell its residents not to shoot at a hurricane? <laughs> we live in a really terrifying world. I think we can all agree that we're grasping desperately for ways to feel safer, to have some control, to protect ourselves and our loved ones. And you all actually have the capacity to make choices that can do that. We may not be able to control whether a deeply damaged individual shoots into a crowd of people, but you can certainly make a very easy decision to deny permit applications and find any way you can to work with other local municipalities to protect your community and your constituents from an activity that is so dangerous it can only be summarized in a 209 page report. Thank you for your time and effort. Melissa Wendell. we are to be able to harvest something that we all rely on on a daily existence, which is oil and gas, and how it is better to harvest it in our own country versus having to go to war to fight for it in other countries. And in that place, I feel gratitude to be able to stop the lives of others potentially being murdered or blown up from that place. But on the second hand of it, it also brings great danger to our own health and our own existence. And so what I'm speaking about is how we can not only ban it, but also bring a better solution to help. Now, being 35, 36 in a few weeks, and being born in this beautiful town, and my daughter also being born in the same hospital that I was, and spending every summer out at the Union Reservoir, and also being a mother of a child who is lucky enough to go to a Montessori here, that their playground right now, is a parking lot closed off from other things to be safe, and they haven't ever actually had anything to play on. And we finally have the hopes of a school to be built, which is now going to be next to a fracking place. Now, I am a raising community member of the LGBT, the Latino, and the art community, and I love to see how long that has fully thrived and is continuously blossoming into new waves of our future, and how dishonoring would it be to be surrounded by oil, oil bricks and wells that are going to take everything that we have been building up in this town and completely devalue it and break it down. I ask you for more than help, and I ask you for more than trust, excuse me, I ask you for more than help, and I ask you for more than faith. I am here in trust that you will find compassion in your heart for our children, for your parents, for ourselves, and for everyone around us. And I'd like to take this moment to ask all the children that are here that are future of this town to please stand up. These children right here are the hearts of our future. And I can tell you right now, I know personally 90% of them, and I know what they have for them and for this future, and to know that the school that they will be growing up on next to could easily blow up, losing 300 of their lives, or potentially fall in a fault line is completely devastating. I am here to ask to ban oil in any of that industry on our land, but also to be the next wave of our future and to show the next green 
the next green path of how we can create a bigger solution. With that, thank, thank you. you. Any further? <laughs> Good evening, my name is Annie Ritter, and I live at 815 6th Avenue in Longmont. And I am here as a member of the Boulder County and Longmont Protectors Group to speak against fracking coming to Longmont. I grew up in Longmont and spent many days of my childhood enjoying the Longmont open space. I especially have fond memories of the countless summer days that I spent swimming at Union Reservoir with my friends and family. I feel a strong connection to this land, and it makes me sick to see how this land has been devalued to the point where it is looked on as if it has a great big dollar sign on it with no other purpose or importance. The care for life is our responsibility to be protective guardians of this land. It's, it is fading, and we are being subjected to this weirdly normalized spell about having no choice other than to let fracking come in and destroy and poison the land, and that it's all going to be okay because it's safely regulated, but I'm not buying it. Sitting here listening to the presentation on oil and gas plans last Tuesday, I heard no action plan or even a desire from most to keep fracking out of Longmont. It is almost as if you have passively laid down on the job and accepted an outcome that the people have so clearly spoken against. You have moved on to plans of, and strategies and safely regulating instead of banning fracking. There are lots of words spoken to skirt around the issue and to try to put our minds at ease, while at the same time plans are moving forward to bring fracking into Longmont. We have been fed a lot of stories about we're doing the best we can with what we've got and we're safely regulating and we're going with an oil and gas company that we feel, that we feel like we can trust. I appreciate Joan's, Joan's Peck's desire to not put the people at Union Reservoir in any danger and to shut down the swimming beach should drilling take place in that area. But we should not have to be looking at shutting down the reservoir. This is moving beyond the point and it is not where the focus needs to be. Let's back this up to the, to, the real point, to the real point here. We do not want fracking in Longmont, period. Everything else is just a cover up of words distracting away from the true issue. We are asking for you to stand with us and say you want to ban fracking in Longmont. We are asking you to deny the permit to authorize permission to drill at Union Reservoir and all other permits in Longmont. We want to get sued and take this to the Supreme Court. Your hands are not tied. You do have a say. Who are you going to serve? Let's not sit here passively as if Longmont has already been defeated and act as if our outcome is inevitable. Let's put our creativity into keeping fracking out of Longmont. Thank you for answer up, thanks. Teresa Foster. <coughs> Hi, my name is Teresa Foster at 1440 Baker Street. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see you all tonight. Um, I'm with the Longmont Protectors and Boulder County Protectors as well. I noticed in the agenda packet that City Council is voting today whether or not to sign a joint letter to the Governor and the COGCC appealing to them to take the necessary actions to achieve these goals and address these increasingly controversial fracking issues. Controversial issue? This is more than an issue. Fracking is something that will seriously harm the citizens of Longmont. How? They will harm our health, our property values, our quality of life. This letter you are discussing is a waste of time. We know what the response will be. They've already shown us by overturning our fracking ban that the citizens of Longmont overwhelmingly voted for. And the biggest insult is that they are using our tax dollars to fight us. They've declared preemption no matter what we say or do. We are fighting the wrong battle. 
Where in the letter does it discuss our fundamental rights as human beings to clean air, clean water, and a clean environment? Our rights as human beings outrank the laws put forth by the state. It's in our state constitution. We the people say absolutely no to any drilling or pipelines in or near the city of Longmont. Our fundamental rights as human beings will be violated if fracking is allowed in our city. The laws enacted by the state have been put in place to protect the corporations, not the people. Regulations have been written by the oil and gas industry for the industry and do not protect us. They only regulate the amount of harm being done to us. We need to open a new dialogue that can be addressed by a community bill of rights. So what will it be? Will you side with the people in every way? Will you refuse to administer the destruction of the land and its climate? Will you work with the community so that we can protect ourselves from this invading and intrusive industry? If you can't do these things, then step aside and let the people lead. John Whitney. And uh, time to speed this up, the next person is going to be Kristen Burris, so please be ready to come down when John's done. I think this is fun. Um, yeah, so John and I live at 1808 Spruce, and all my friends here have already said plenty to explain the situation to you. So I'm not exactly sure how to expand on it, but I don't know if this is a very healthy city and community, and you've got a lot of Athletes. I'm not a professional athlete by any means, but my free time is spent out and about, <coughs> particularly triathlons. And any use of energy results in needing water, but if you're swimming in dirty water at the reservoir, you're probably not going to come out of that already. So, off the top of my head, I got nothing left. Other people got is that repeating everybody's stuff. <laughs> Kristen Burris. Good evening. My name is Kirsten Burris. I live at 1303 Carolina Avenue. We are asking you tonight to take a stand against unjust, undemocratic, corrupt laws, and to take your blinders off and stand with us. These laws that say we do not have a choice about 1,800 fracking wells, the oil and gas industry wants to put on our open space land. Open space land. I grew up in Boulder County. Um, that always meant to me protected land. What does it mean now? 1,800 fracking wells on protected land? I mean, let's wake up, guys. Do you think this is an industry that's regulating anything? Take a look at Weld. Go down County Road 1. Take a trip to Erie and see the nosebleeds and the eyes burning and the barbecues that are canceled because this is absolutely polluting and ruining our community. These are not laws that are just any more than laws of slavery were just. Slavery was legal once too. How many of you guys would stand and say, sorry guys, our hands are tied. Let's get real. This is absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. And we want to ask for a pledge from every city council member that will be on the new council to pledge to ban fracking. I am in the process of talking to a lawyer 
uh, at the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund that is going to help us to develop our own Community Bill of Rights and our own legislation as people. Because we can't wait around for you guys. We already went through the system and look what happened. It's corrupt, guys. It doesn't work. We're taking it into our own hands now as individuals because we have the right to do so. And so do you. Where will you be standing? In the light with your community or in the absolute darkness with this oil and gas industry that you know, you absolutely know, is going to freaking kill us. And none of us are going to be sending our kids to Union Reservoir, I can bet you, just because it's eight miles underneath our water. Thank you. Really, it hurts. Amelia Hurst, 78, 73 St. Grain Road. Mayor Coombs, council members. Last week, council member Jeff Moore opened with a recommendation to unite with Allied Cities of Boulder County and push back against the test system fracking. I hope to leave here tonight with a date and time for that. I also urge for representation of our own legal protections and the Climate Change Bill of Rights. This is my argument. People love to think of fracking as a way to make money. I believe instead it's just an unconscionable, unconstitutional way unconstitutional way to redistribute it by stealing from the public to funnel it to the powerful. If you've never read The Law of the Commons, it's a short essay to explain commonly held resources. A short story about a lake shared evenly by all the residents around it to enjoy, drink, fish, feed their families, and afford their lives. This continued sustainably for years until one of the residents decided to harvest all the fish, you for, all the fish for himself and sell them to faraway markets, leaving nothing behind but an ecosystem thrown terribly out of balance. Ironically, now he was the only one with a pot of gold to afford alternatives, including the ability to leave and ignore the crisis he just created for everyone else, suddenly without clean water, food, or means to afford the new expenses of poverty, like crime and disease, rampant and destabilized economies and communities. Hope you're following me. Fracking takes commonly held resources, our clean water, air, communally paid for open space, and sells them to companies who claim a profit, but only because they've been allowed to outsource all of the costs over the very residents they just stole it from. It's a taking, which is a legal term for when the government confiscates. It imposes great medical expense on taxpayers, either directly or through assisting those who can't afford treatment for the associated respiratory ailments and cancers. It imposes the loss of these beautiful spaces. It imposes the higher expense of water by creating scarcity. It imposes the cost of eroded infrastructure, just to name a few. Even if someone else owns the mineral rights, we're not required to open wide carte blanche all forms of access. As long as we continue to let them write, write the guidelines, guys will continue to lose by their rules. You must find constitutional means of protecting what is ours and our people. Place the burden of proof on them to prove to you this is safe. For proof, simply require they submit themselves to the Clean Water and Air Act. Review the master contract in light of all the science that's come forth since its conception and write new conditions. That a proper amount of money be placed in escrow to repay outsourced health and property risks and return every square inch to its natural state, including connect connected water and sky surrounding areas and every person they stayed prior. This true indicator of cost will eclipse any fiction of profit. Turn the game around, go on the attack. Represent the worth of things that this would sacrifice that aren't up for sale. Why? Because you're not an independent voter in a booth representing your own opinion. You're only an office to represent with one hand what many hands have asked. And that is clearly and overwhelmingly by majority and unwaveringly for years to not allow fracking. We don't need to see how it goes, assess risks, or negotiate our position under pressure. This experiment is played out repeatedly, and we know. It's madness to give up more ground, repeat calamities, or open the gateway. No means no, and any other answer is forced pillaging by our own government, and one now in the practice of double dipping, to first take our tax money to do as, as we've asked, and then behind our backs take theirs to do what they demand in opposition. Thank you. Sarah Russell. Good evening, A. Combs, Council Member Sarah Russell, 723 Vivian Street, Karen Long Lawns. I am here as a healthcare professional and a concerned resident speaking out about predicament we use community based land fracking in Boulder County and specifically here in Longmont. You are each our elected representatives. We as a community understand the vast challenge we face in our fight to ban fracking. As our elected representatives, we demand that you hear us and we demand you stand up with us against the oil and gas industry. Banning fracking is not, as you have heard, an impossible task. 
And it is our responsibility, yours and ours together, to protect our land, our air, our water, and our community from the toxic effects of fracking. Regulations are not enough. Fracking our land is not a safe practice, with many examples having been cited by others here before me. We do not expect you to fight this fight alone. We are here, and we expect you to stand up with us and to work tirelessly and diligently to ban fracking. We demand that you, as our representatives, refuse permits to frack around Union Reservoir and then to refuse any further fracking permits requested until such a day that we completely ban fracking altogether. We are willing to stand united against any consequences the oil and gas industry brings down upon us, and we demand that you stand with us to protect Longmont, our land, our water, our air, and our right to choose laws that are democratic and just. Thank you. Barbara Patton. Barbara Patton, 1010 6th Avenue, Mayor Coons, City Council members. I'm standing here before you tonight as a citizen of Longmont, grateful to live in this beautiful, beautiful town. You're my elected representative in our government, and I'm here to speak out to have you hear the voice of one of your constituents. I live in Boulder County and in Longmont, not in Erie or in Firestone or Weld County. I do not want us to have oil drilling operations everywhere we look, infecting the land and the air and the earth and the water. I'm asking you to ban fracking to issue no more permits for oil drilling or fracking operations, not at Union Reservoir, not by the rec center, not anywhere in your jurisdiction. It's not okay to come to a stop with the overturn of our fracking ban and to say, oh well, we just give up our rights to a healthy life and try to regulate these activities. No, it's not enough. It's not effective. We ask you to stop this madness, this infiltration of our earth with chemicals and poisons that put our citizens in harm's way. Stop this. Stand up. Be creative. Represent the interests of your constituents. Please look into your hearts and take command of your responsibility to protect and defend the citizens of Longmont and our beautiful land. Mark Osborne. Good evening, Council Members. Mark Osborne, 937 Davis Court. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with me this evening. I heard the phrase, drain the swamp, from uh, our current president a number of months ago, and I was, uh, I was kind of intrigued by that expression. It uh, has simplicity to it. Um, and it resonates very clearly what I think every one of us perceives about uh, our federal government, particularly Congress. There's an approval rating that I think is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10%, and uh, it's been extremely low for a long, long time. So it was very easy to look at that phrase and say, mm, there's a problem there that needs to be fixed. But I think as I contemplated that more and more, I had to notice a few other things. One is that those appointed to a justice system out of a Congress that does not function uh, is likely to have some pretty serious problems uh, itself. There are certainly laws and regulations in this company that's country that serve us extremely well. But I think all of us acknowledge that there are some problems as well. The founders of this country observed that in the, even the first and second decade after the establishment of this nation, there were already problems with corruption and abuse of power and the over-influence of money. So there's a long, long thread in this country of money over citizens' freedoms and democracy. That's not new. So as I watched the decisions made in recent years, our own lawsuit that ultimately went to the state Supreme Court, uh, I was 
shocked by that decision. I wasn't just shocked by the decision. I was shocked to read the contents of the decision and the logic and the reasoning and the quote, the law that that was based on. So I don't think there's a lot of disagreement that we got some things wrong, either at the federal level or apparently in our Supreme Court. And I think what's true is that shadow that we'd love to believe is in Washington is also in the state of Colorado. It's in the state of most other, it's in most other states in this nation. It's present in Boulder County. It's present in Longmont City to some extent, whether we like it or not. And present in surrounding, surrounding cities. That's a problem. And it means at a certain point, we have to say, mm, I understand what the law is, but uh, maybe there's something wrong here. And maybe I've got to stand up and say, uh, sorry, this is not justice. This is not democracy. This is not serving the people of this city, or this county, or this state, or this nation. And so I would ask all of you, while you may have a decision to make about fracking and the law, that you Sorry. make your decisions based on democracy and freedom. The okay, three minutes reference where that comes in. Thank you. <coughs> Kimber Gerson. My name is Kimber Robinson and I reside at 310 Judson Street. I'm here to speak on the issue of fracking. Um, it appears that most have decided that the fight is over, that it's too late and that our hands are tied. But I cannot accept an unacceptable response. I'm a family nurse practitioner here in Longmont. I work in a family practice where a large percentage of my population is babies and small children, some of the most vulnerable of our population. Every day I'm honored that I've been given the opportunity to serve in this way, and I take that, that responsibility seriously. I see that I have a duty to speak tonight about the absolute atrocity that fracking would bring to this community. There are countless dangers associated with fracking that any intelligent, conscious individual would be well aware of if they were actually paying attention. I do observe this in my practice on a daily basis with the children that I serve who are from communities surrounding ours and who are dealing with these issues more directly. You cannot destroy the earth, the water, the air, and have your own health, vitality, and wellness. Respiratory disease, leukemia and other cancers, sterility, miscarriage, fetal demise, birth defects, neurotoxicity, thyroid disease, asthma, endocrine diseases, the list goes on and on. And these are not hypothetical concerns. There are over 700 studies now have been done, and over 80% of those health-related studies have shown actual or very serious risks. This is really, is this really the legacy that we're gonna leave for our children to deal with? All this because we were too ignorant, too foolish, or too complacent to actually stand up against this big black business that cares nothing for the sacredness of life, yours or mine. We have all been brainwashed to think that it's just gonna be fine by a slick media designed and determined to make you believe that it's going to be okay, but it's not. You council members would be hard pressed to claim such ignorance on this topic as your constituents have stood before you year after year, pleading for you to take a stand with us to refuse to allow fracking into our community. This decision has the potential to be one of the most devastating choices that could ever be made for our community, a decision that will play out in the years and decades and generations to come, but it also has the potential to be an example of the hope and perseverance, care, and commitment of one community who was willing to stand up that will be an example for thousands of other communities who are or will be in the same position in the years to come. Wouldn't that be a far more powerful legacy to leave behind? Thank you. Brian Gerberson. Good evening. I'm Brian Gerberson. I'm on Street. Um, I want to thank you all for your service. And I take that word service uh, seriously. Um, I'm going to put a little script here, but um, I'm asking you who you serve. 
Do you serve oil and gas? And if you do, and if you're going to approve these well permits, then go work for them. We are asking you to serve us, that we elected to protect us and our land. After hearing about the unionized work going last week, I just, I was just blown that we're thinking about drilling through a fall line. And do we now remember about this nuclear power plant that we built in Japan that was taken down by an earthquake? Or how about we had floods three years ago? Or we had four, four feet of rain fall in Houston two months ago. And to think that the water is going to safely flow to the south in one of those events, really, nature is unpredictable. I'm a biologist, and I know that nature is unpredictable. I also work out at the rec center. I'm a trainer out there, and some of my clients are immune compromised. They've had cancer, or they're elderly. And I care for them deeply, and I'm also there to serve them. And I'm concerned about the 200 plus wells that are going to go on right next door to where I work. There's going to be a new innovation center out there, the museum is out there, and there's a whole new housing development out there. What are you going to tell those people when they can't sell their homes, purchase a home because the air is toxic? And that's going to be a big problem in our community. I'm also a parent here. My son is um, somewhere around. Um, and you know, I, I'm a native to the state, and it you know breaks my heart to see what Colorado has become. You know, I remember the mountains and the, the plains and the grass, and what that is now becoming a polka dotted, connected dots. When you look at a map of Colorado, connected the dots of the fracking wells, and it's disgusting. Um, I ask you to please ban all permits. Please stand up for us. We believe you guys. We believe that your creativity and your passion for our community. And please don't approve that pipeline. I was surprised you guys were even considering that last week when I heard about it. Like, if you're considering a pipeline, that means you're looking forward to go ahead. Let's be creative here. I'm sure most of you have a higher education. If not, you're creative in some way. Put your minds together. We empowered you. We voted you in. So please help us out. Support us. Thank you. Let's take a uh, six minute break. <laughs>